Edutrainment Workshops, the insurance industry's leading education and training platform presents Life Insurance, the entry-level series, the products, the underwriting, and the planning applications to position your practice as the premier provider of insurance products in your community. Get on board, get on track, get to where you're going. And now, your Edge Trainer, National Insurance Columnist, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone. I'm Steve Savant, your Edge Trainer and Coach for our edutrainment workshops, our entry-level introduction into life insurance, and all this week, we're giving you an introduction into survivorship life insurance, or as some people call it, second to die, my euphemism, euphemism is, last man out. Well, I just wanna remind you again, if you haven't really, if you're coming into this class at the front end, you really need to go back to the beginning and take our entry-level courses. Those first two to three weeks are critical because if you try to drop in today, I think you'll have some, a little bit of difficulty. And one of our premises that we believe is using the right software to have good tutorial or a good learning experience. And we believe that Lincoln Benefit Life's Eclipse Software Illustration System is probably the easiest to understand and really easy to use. If you go out to their website at www.lblsales forward slash, well, I'm sorry, it's lblsales.com forward slash ETW, you can go right out to the system. It'll say Eclipse Illustration Software. You'll see Run Installer. Go ahead and push that button and go ahead and download. And then you can go page by page with us. It's an excellent tool. We'll be using it this week. So it's good time. And if you're saying, Steve, I haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that right now just to make sure. And then secondly, Lincoln Benefit, which is owned by uh, Allstate. Allstate's done some great stuff here. And this is a great area of review and brochures, prospecting letters and postcards. And they have a thing called the Facts of Life booklet. It's a great data collector. It harvests clients' assets. And we use it as, it's a great tool. It comes in a book form or an attached email file. If you just go out to their site, which is showing at the bottom of the screen, or if you can't see that, go ahead into the search engine optimization uh, paper doc that's actually attached to this and just go ahead and look at it, cut and paste it out and put it in your browser and you'll just be fine. Also, they have these prospecting letters and postcards. They're excellent tools. If you're looking for a kind of a marketing campaign, these are really good entry-level campaigns. Again, though, if you're FINRA licensed, you're still gonna have to have this approved. Even though Allstate approved it for their use, you're still gonna have to have your compliance department approve it. And if you're with an insurance agency that has similar protocols, you'll have to do the same. And for all of us, just as a reminder, if you forget, boy, I can't remember where I saw that show. I saw it on the internet. Remember, we're all over Google. You want to be able to go to our site for any of our former episodes. And again, we encourage you to start from the beginning. Just go out to www.brokersalliance.com. You'll come right here to the homepage. And on our homepage is that red on-demand video button. Also playing in the upper right corner is our daily talk show, The Business Insurance Zone, little plug for the show. So you'll always be able to go to that button, hit it, and be able to catch up on all our archives on edutrainment workshops. Now today we're talking about underwriting. And underwriting is critical, especially when we're talking about life insurance, and especially when we're talking about second to die. Now I'm just gonna go through this review. Some of you have been taking the course, say, see, I've seen this before. Well, that's right, there's similar similarities. And I want you to be able to look at this because in my view, you gotta have kind of an understanding. You don't have to be an underwriter, but in the old day when I came into the business 30 years ago, they actually are named for it. We were really, we weren't really, we were agents, we were producers, but more than that, we were field underwriters. So that was our actual name or our title in the old days. And when I look at this and I say, wow, we had to kind of know some of the basics. Well, you have to know some of the basics to get around. Now, in this I'm looking at, First thing I'm looking at is height and weight, you know, body mass index. I want to see how much uh, the, my client weighs in relativeness to their height. And remember, there are certain carriers that are big in what I would call the heavy client or the heavy insured. Their expertise lays there in that sector of overweight people. I mean, it's just like really tremendous, tremendous underwriting and they've taken a different point of view. So if your client's rather heavy or vertically challenged, as we say, You'll just want to go to carriers that are going to be more benevolent in that area. One of the first questions it's going to ask, and it makes a major difference, not only in regular life insurance, but of course in second to die as well, is the smoking status of the client. Is the client a smoker now? If they're not a smoker, when did they quit? One year, three year, 
five years? Remember, you can order our complete smoker grid that shows all our carriers, cigar, chew, snuff, it, Nicorette gum. It shows everything you want to be able to look at on a grid so you don't have to go look it up from company to company to see where you are. And if you want that, just order it, the biz at brokersalliance.com. That's T-H-E-B-I-Z at brokersalliance.com. And if you order that, you might as well order the life manual and its vocabulary list that goes with it. And you can order that again at the biz at brokersalliance.com. So tobacco use, I want to know, did you ever smoke? Or if you have quit, is it one year, three or five years? Are you using other tobacco products that aren't cigarette based? They're cigars, pipes, chew, Nicorette gum. I want to know that. And it makes a difference because from carrier to carrier, and you'll see it on that grid if you order it, it really makes a difference to know that. Now, one of the things that we're looking at now is our blood pressure. And I want to see both of our readings and of course, Anytime I'm talking about blood pressure, I want to know, am I on medication? And keep in mind that many carriers love managed blood pressure and cholesterol. So just because your client's taking medication doesn't necessarily mean, oh, they've been, they're going to have a lower rating or they're going to be penalized for it. It depends upon a lot of their factors, but medication in and of itself. So when you look at that and you say, wow, I have a pretty good blood pressure, 120 over 80 or below. That's going to be a really good blood pressure. And even if it's used, you're using medication to keep it down for hypertension or for blood, high blood pressure, again, remember, this is, I want to know that number. I can kind of know going in what carrier is going to be the best for this kind of contract for second to die. The next thing I want to know, of course, is cholesterol level. And I just had mine done again. And I'm trying to keep mine under 200. I like to eat. I'm just, uh, I probably don't need all the right things, but I'm trying to keep it under 200 and keep my HDL ratio at a decent number and a decent rate. We're going to look at that rate. It's important to know what is this cholesterol rate? What is my HDL ratio? And am I taking any cholesterol medication for this? Again, if I'm managing it, if I'm taking care of it, if I'm on a maintenance program, and if I start to add exercise to this, especially for people who have a propensity for diabetes or have a predisposition in their family uh, background for diabetes, I want to be able to look at that number, especially as we get older, it, there are telltale signs and we want to be able to look at that and make sure. Now, another thing that we look at is family history. Family history is important to some carriers. And so you have to remember, depending upon if mom and dad died of a cardiovascular issue or of cancer, anything like that in those, the, what I would call the bigger diabetes, and they were also had weight problems and diabetes, and they had other issues. Anytime I have multiple issues in a family tree that's, and people are dying in their 60s or below, that may come into view for underwriting. So I want to know all the family history of mom and dad, what, are they alive? If they died, what did they die of? I want to know about your siblings, brothers and sisters, and I want to be able to kind of measure that and say, okay, here's the family history, and have we had any family members with any cardiovascular disease prior to age 70? And the odds are high that you're going to have some of this, but again, management may be able, uh, be able to take care of this. And then we're looking at medical history. Now, my first visitation into the ER was about 2004, and you know, I, I was feeling kind of strange, and I felt my blood pressure felt high, and I never had any problems before, never been on medication. And I just went, walked into the ER, and I found out I was hypertensive. And I had to go ahead, and I, that's my history now. That's in there. Steve visited the ER back in 2004. So now that's part of my record. When I look at my record and my attending physician statement, now I manage it. I go in regularly, as you should. I try to watch what I eat, and though I'm not always good at it. But my medical history, my attending physician statement, is going to be in my cardiologist's office. And when we order these docs, we're going to look at the language of which the physician sometimes has to give clarification in letters to further clarify a position that may have sounded a little negative in the APS. So we're always looking for a language that may show some kind of negativity. But also in the language of the APS, we might find some lifestyle credits. And if we find lifestyle credits like, oh, he works out every day. He does not drink. He, when he does drink milk, it's skim milk. He has certain dietary protocols. He's managing his cholesterol and he's managing his high blood pressure or hypertensive. All those things are going to be incorporated into a factor. I might get points or credits against my debit side of my underwriting offer. So I want to be able to make sure I make full disclosure because there's going to be some areas of life credits that are really going to push me into the next level, which makes my insurance cheaper. Also, we're going to look at your driving record, your MVR. Do you have a propensity 
for drinking? Do you have DUIs or, or DWIs, depending upon what state and the language they use? How many moving violations do you have? And we're looking at moving violations. I'm not talking about you know, my, my uh, Steve speeding tickets. I get, it seems like I get one every four years or something like that. We're looking at moving violations where you're cruising. You know, the, the last client we looked at was doing 95 in a 35 mile an hour zone. That's kind of fast. And they have two or three tickets like that. And of course, that's a problem. And they want to know, hey, are you drinking and driving? Have you ever been arrested? Is there anything on your motor vehicle report that's going to show up that says, oh, this person's been arrested for driving while under the influence? And I need to know what kind of protocols you did after the fact. And do I have multiple DUIs? If I have multiple DUIs, did I go in and, and go put myself into a clinic? Did I go through rehab? Did I try to go through an addiction service? Am I in a support group? I want to know all those issues. And how many times, if at all, have I had my, have I had my license revoked or suspended? And how many times has that occurred? All these things are incorporated into the medical underwriting decision and this is a behavioral issue. You say, well, what's it doing in medical? Well, it actually has impact on our medical underwriting and how we make a decision. Now, alcohol substance abuse. Again, similar to the addiction services we talked about. If you're having alcohol problems and your client has these propensities and they have that also in their family tree, you know, where sometimes stuff like this complicates and compounds the underwriting decision. So when I'm looking at this, I want to know, do I have any history for being treated? Do I have any support groups? Have I completely stopped drinking? Interesting to know, people ask on the application, depending upon uh, different carriers, ask this question, do you drink at all? And nobody's going to ding you for a glass of wine with a good dinner. Nobody's going to say you had a couple of beers on the weekend. They're looking for consistent use. And even though you may say, I'm functional, am I at the place where when I go ahead and take my blood and urine exam, is that going to show up on my report? And if it does, I'd rather just disclose it now. I have three or four beers a day. This is what I do, and I'm functional. But hey, is that going to show up in my medical report? I need to make sure that, that I understand what that report's going to show up when I take my blood and urine exam. Now, another thing we're looking at is foreign travel, especially in these days where you have terrorism and political unrest and all these places. It may not be a good place right now, as an example, if a person said, hey, I want to get insurance, but before I do, I, I'm going to be traveling to Syria. Well, the odds are you're not going to get underwritten right now because that, is, that place is in turmoil right on the edge of civil war, and they're not going to give you insurance and then let you travel on it. There will be other hot places in, in the world where it could be Iran. Any place in the Middle East really is going to be an issue. There are other issues where it's a lot more controlled and a lot safer, but you just want to make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. Foreign travel is a big deal. I want to know where. If I'm going to Japan, probably not an issue. If I'm going to Canada, probably not an issue. More and more, though, depends upon if you cross the border in Mexico, depending upon where you're going and where you're going to spend your vacation. Mexico now could be a problem, just depending upon where you're traveling and so forth. Every insurance carrier has their own protocol. And you just say, well, I don't know what that is. We have that for you. And if you just want to uh, call that up, we'll go ahead and give you any of the carriers that we're looking at. There are carriers that are pretty benevolent here, but not Syria. And then we're looking at, you. are you a US resident? Are you a green card? Are you a, a legal alien? All those things matter. And remember, there are carriers that specify, and I mean, they're very good at all types of uh, what were from green cards to alien, ship, uh, alien citizenship. They're really benevolent. And, and the more international the carrier is, probably the more offers you're going to get a better offer just because they play in that arena. And the last thing I want to talk about is hazardous sports, hazardous jobs, and aviation. We have a complete grid on aviation, whether your client's an instrument rated pilot or whatever, we have a complete grid of all the carriers and their disposition in aviation. So if you say, Steve, I have pilots and I have some clients like that, I would like to order that. Just say, Steve, I want the aviation grid. I'll send it to you. Just write me, the biz at brokersalliance.com. And also, when you're talking about hazards, whether it's rock climbing, scuba diving, motorcycle racing, fast car racing, anything that's dangerous, that needs to be disclosed on the app, and they're going to ask you about that. They're going to ask, is this a casual recreational issue? Are you doing this on the weekend as a profession? What are you doing here? They want to know your job, and sometimes jobs are very dangerous. Certain vocations are going to be looked upon as hazardous, so you're going to have to incorporate that into your thinking if I have vocation or if I have any kind of aviation or hazardous sports. That's underwriting for Second to Die.
This has been an edutrainment workshop, the educational division of the National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance, and sponsored by Lincoln Benefit Life, an Allstate company.